Hey, what's going on YouTube? Jimmy here, tuning in. Uh, glad you're tuning in for a new video. I'm going to do my tutorial part three. A little bit of painting. Um, a couple of things I forgot to mention in part one about liquid masking is one of these uh, strainers I bought. Uh, I guess like a spinach strainer kind of thing, but they're pretty cheap. There was a stack of three for a dollar or two at the at the dollar store. I run my liquid mask through this to take out any chunks out of the liquid mask material. So. You're not trying to spray it if you're going to spray liquid mask on it really helps out a lot so i wanted to mention that and also my uh, cleaning kit which i got on amazon um, it's got different brushes for putting through the needle i uh, remove the needle and put these through the nozzle and the and the airbrush it comes with a scraper for scraping out dried paint you got to be gentle don't put this in the in the nozzle right where the needle runs through at the very end very delicate so i wouldn't scrape that out with this but you can scrape out the back of it and the barrel of the, of the airbrush with it and all that. This is for like extreme cases of really dried paint when you haven't cleaned it properly or you put it away in a rush to go eat or something, whatever. So, but it comes in handy for sure. All right, let's get painting. I got a little, I've done the blue. I've cut out my next, uh, my next colors. This is going to be um, black and um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do black and silver or black and then orange in this. I might do black and then orange and then do a, a black, yellow, white, pearl white fade on that. This That's going to be an eBay body. Um, and then the BJ4 Worlds and the BJ4 Original Bodies, I'm going to do black and silver. Uh, so I'm just going to do some detailed black in the shadowing for the shadowing effect on the panels. Um, a little bit of black and then I'm going to spray silver to back the blue and the silver panels all in one shot just to save paint. So let's see what we can do here. Get this started up. And like I say, I'm not wearing a mask so that I can talk to talk to you guys, but you really should wear a mask because even though it's non-toxic, it still sticks to Lexan. So it can't be good to do this a lot and not wear a mask. Sometimes I find myself doing really quick little projects without a mask on, but Got to try to change that habit. Test it a little black. This is actually a pearl black, uh, 5315 pearl black from Createx. I bought a Hobby Lobby for $4.99. It works good for shadowing. It's not quite as dark as the regular black. It works pretty well. I got to turn my hair for 20 to 25 psi when I'm doing deep sea here. Doing a little bit of shadowing around the scoops. Really hard to see. That's exactly how you want shading to be. You don't want it to show up too much when you're when you're just spraying this part. It should be barely noticeable when you back it. It'll, it'll give you a lot a lot of depth. Just going to do the very edge where it looks like the flames are going over the checkers and the, and the outlines. The flames are going over it, so I want the shadow right before I put the silver, so it looks like the silver border goes underneath the flames when you hope that makes sense to show you. But when those are sprayed, it looks like it's underneath the windows. Might need to replace them. Do the shadowing on the outside edges of the scallops on top to get the illusion that the light's coming from the other direction. And I'll do the outside edges of the scallops on the roof as well for the same effect. I don't, uh, I don't do the shadowing as if the light's going across the whole car, so the, shadow, the shadows would be on that side. On the, on the left side, they'd be on the outside. On the right side, they'd be on the inside. I don't do that. Because I'm not looking to make it look like the light's hitting the whole body. I want it symmetrical from the center out on both sides. So I'm going to try to make it look like the, the light might be hitting directly on top, I suppose, is how you look at it. I like to put a little bit of black around the body mount holes. So that if they do take some damage and crashes, you can touch it up with a little bit of black real easy and make it look a little better. Keep the body looking new for a while. 
I'm spraying a lot better now. I might have just had a little bit of a dry chunk of paint somewhere in the, in the spray gun out of the top of the bottle from the cap. Got to watch for that a little bit. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to take off the uh, masking for the stripes. So I can do the silver all at one time, like I said earlier, to save our materials. It shouldn't be a big deal. I know a lot of people fight with that, but it's usually because there's not enough liquid mask laid down to be able to grab it and pull it up cleanly. Like I said in the first video, about three three coats if you put it on pretty pretty liberally. If you uh, if you're a little stingy with it and you like you really like coats, you might need to do five coats. I've seen some guys put it on really thin takes quite a bit more material to get the right thickness of, of thickness I guess is about the measurement I did cut these all out ahead of time instead of as I go it just depends on the, on the design sometimes I'll cut them out all at once and sometimes I'll cut them out as I go if you cut them out as you go it's easier to find the line you cut, but it's harder to find where you're supposed to cut. You cut them out ahead of time, it's easier to find it where you're supposed to cut, but then sometimes it's harder to find the line you already cut. So you kind of have to weigh it by the by the job you're doing. <clears throat> you want to you have a very intricate design, and you probably want to cut it all out ahead of time and try to lay the material in very light so that you can see your cut lines as you go. Give them some depth around the windows. Put a little bit of heat in there and dry this a little faster. Once you feel the body start to get warm on the back, then back off. You don't want to, you could actually heat the Lexan enough to deform it a little bit. <clears throat> so you want to definitely avoid that. But yeah, I think this is good. Just I only put a drop of paint, literally one drop of paint in there. Um, now I'm going to go to the silver. Back brush the gun a little bit. First cup I dump. Then I use my brush, clean out some of the paint from here. I have a garbage can under the workbench. I, I line it with cardboard and I just spray all my old paints and, and empty the, the water base producers and cleaners in there. <clears throat> I'm not dumping it on the floor. <laughs> All right. The silver I like is uh, Auto Air Aluminum Base. Sprays really, really well. A lot of the other silvers that you get from Proline and, and uh, Parma and all of those brands, the, even the Createx, it seems to be transparent. So anytime you use their silvers, a lot of times you'll end up having to back it with white just because it'll be transparent and the next color will show through the silver. But with this, it doesn't It doesn't happen. It sprays really well. It's almost like a, uh, a flat silver. They call it aluminum. It's uh, part number 4101, aluminum base fine. Sprays really nice. And this bottle, I, I want to say this bottle is probably three years old. And it still sprays really well. It's not as finicky as some of the other colors. You can see that's it's laying right down on there nice. This stuff covers well. It's not transparent, not as much. Even the backing coats, uh, I try to do a little bit lighter on the first coat. And then you can go a little heavier after that. It seems like if you're painting and you're you haven't taken a break, these bodies have been here for two or three days. Uh, I don't paint much right after work anymore. I'm usually too tired. Maybe I'm getting old, so I've been told. <laughs> but uh, if the paint's been dried for several days, then I put a, a little tack coat again as if I'm just painting on the Lexan. Just do a light tack coat, go to the next body, <clears throat> do the same thing. And by the time you're done, you can go lay your final coat in there. Backing colors can be laid in pretty heavy after that. You don't want to get too close, because then it gets blotchy. So I'm trying to stay about four inches or so away. 
That's kind of a feel thing. There's no right or wrong, but that's what works for me. If you get close, you'll end up uh, with lines, and they'll show through in the primary color. Alright, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to finish up the silver on these bodies. Okay. All the boring silver backing on all three bodies, two coats, all done. I'm going to put a little bit of blue on these uh, the wings. If you paint your wings, something you can do to so that they don't look uh, two-toned blue on the inside and silver on the side. Just lay a little bit of blue over it. It'll, it'll work fine. Lay a little blue. You could even do a little black around the outline to make it match the... Uh, <clears throat> Make it match what you have on the inside of the wing. A little bit of a black shadowing. I might do that at the end here, right when I'm finishing this up. A lot of guys don't paint their wings because they don't like the, the backing color on the side dams. So just lay the main color on it. Problem solved. I'm going to finish this up, and then I'll go to uh, red, orange, and yellow. That's what I do like about doing um, bodies with, with less rules, is, um, you know, I can go by feel, I can look at the body, decide what I think might look best, or try something a little different, and if someone says, do whatever you want, or if I'm making a body just to sell on eBay, um, I think for me that's a little, a little more fun. I always like to experiment a little bit. It can burn you if you're not careful though, so as you gain experience, you can try different things and let the, the way pinks and purples go together and um, blue and orange go together, blue and yellow go together, uh, <clears throat> green and yellow go together, blue, green and yellow. Uh, there's so many combinations, it's almost endless, uh, pink and purple. That's something that you have to experiment with or, or look at a paint job that you like and, uh, and try to copy that at first until you get a feel for it yourself. Not really hard though. It takes either experience or you have to mimic what someone else did that you like. Get out my red. I'm going to use opaque Pretex red, part number 5210. Pretex um, fluorescent orange. Part number is 5409. That's from Hobby Lobby 2, 499. It's cheaper than a hobby store to buy it at Hobby Lobby. I don't know why. But... And the fluorescent yellow is going to be 5405. So let me finish uh, spraying up. The fan's not too loud for you guys. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of transparent blue called bright blue. 5106 uh, in the back of this body before I spray the red. Uh, that'll turn it a little bit purple. <clears throat> in those sections, give it some depth. I'm not going to use the, the purple on the uh, on the BJ4 bodies. Though. Another tip is if you're going to go away for a few minutes uh, in between colors or go to the bathroom or whatever, I'll just put a little bit of my reducing and cleaning material in my airbrush, spray it through. That way you don't get dried paint on the tip while you're taking a short break. <clears throat> of course, you have to also spray it back out. A bit of a piece of uh, masking material. Pull that out of there. And be good to go. A little bit of blue. Transparent blue. Right, I'm going to make sure I've done the same, the same part of the designs from left to right. Since I'm kind of doing this on the fly, all I'm doing is looking to see that I do both sides the same. Well, very close. I could even do blue and white kind of icy look on this, huh? At this point, but let's see. I think it'll look good. I'm going to go to uh, 5117 bright red, transparent, uh, which is fine. It's only going to be for the very tips of the flames. So it'll be fine. I am going to have to get another bottle of regular opaque bright red. I'm just using an old 
paper towel to test my spray pattern. <clears throat> Make sure my color's right, my airbrush is cleaned out of my previous color. See what I'm doing? I'm just barely putting it on the tips. <clears throat> you know, it's not going to be a lot. Just a little bit of depth. I try to get every tip, but you don't have to spray every single tip. It's a very subtle thing. There's not a whole, whole lot of red in it. Just barely on the tips. This body I'm going to use more. I try to use just a few drops at a time because it goes pretty far and putting it back in the jar isn't really viable since there's so little of it that you can't get it back out of the paint cup into the jar and you probably shouldn't do that anyway because of the fact that it, it started drying in the paint cup while you're spraying it's, it's drying the whole time so you want to avoid that and it's looking good it's giving me a little bit of the purpley effect I like the way it looks in my head Does that make sense what I'm doing here? From the inside you can see the purple and bluish red. From the outside it's a little harder to see through the film. <clears throat> but once I back it, it's gonna get orange too, so it should have a cool effect. Should end up being pretty cool. Alright. I sprayed the uh, eBay body. Wanted you guys to see what it would look like um, when I peeled it out and stuff so you don't have to sit through the tedious part. You've seen that in the previous videos. A little bit of purple, red, orange. Um, should give you an idea what I'm going for. And then I'm going to fade orange, yellow, and white. Going. I'm just going to do it on the edge, aiming about an eighth of an inch into the work surface for the amount of uh, overlap I want. very transparent. You don't want to try to lay it on in one shot, just like when you first start the paint process. Every time you're on bare wet sand, you got to go back to the light first coat. The finished product at all at this point. Don't forget all your little accents or any, anything you're using the same color. If you peeled out more than one, always take a quick look at it before you move on to the next step. Try to give it a try to give it a quick once over. Make sure you didn't miss anything because you get to the next color and then you realize you missed something. Not that I've ever done that. Between us. And dry this out a little bit. You'll see the pink change from shiny to dull as it dries. <clears throat> as soon as it starts to get dull and stop, you don't need to go overboard and, and heat up the Lexan like I mentioned earlier. Now you can start to get the orange in there a little bit heavier. I have quite a bit of yellow too, so obviously you're not going to fill in the orange. You're only doing the edges. And I try to add a little bit of detail, some of the flame wicks, I'll bring them down into the, into the panel. The orange likes uh, two, sometimes three coats even to get a good, a good amount of pop out of the orange. It has to go on there pretty heavy. Usually I'll do the tack coat, the wet coat, and then the third one to go over it again just to see if I might have a little... You know, a few light areas, <clears throat> same as you do with the, the main color and almost every color. The only time you don't need to do that is if it's a really fine detail. A primary part of the body rather than a, something that's trying to give it depth. This is looking pretty good so far. I don't think it's going to take a third, maybe the orange is covering really well. Hit it with the air dryer again. Let 
doesn't take much. It dries pretty fast if you're laying it on. If you're laying it on too heavy and it's taking a long time to dry, that's an indication you're going to have trouble down the road. Um, if the material thickness is too high, then you get paint pop where an impact makes the chunks of paint just come flaking off the body no matter how well you prep the surface and wash it with soaking water and scuffed it or any of those things. If you lay the paint on really heavy, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop off no matter what. I mean, Lexan is a slippery surface. You're basically, it's almost like you're painting a mirror or a piece of glass. So to get good adhesion, more isn't better. I think what happens is when it gets thick, it gets hard, and it loses flexibility, and that causes the paint to force itself off the surface when there's a heavy impact. Of course, the crashing part doesn't help either, but it almost seems unavoidable. I think I'd have won quite a few more races minus some crashes. <laughs> And the third, the third touch-up is really making it pop good. It wasn't quite dry. There you go. That gives you an idea of what we're looking for. Sometimes I'll hold it against the white door. You can get a little bit, a little bit more of an idea when it's behind the white door, or a white piece of paper, or whatever you have handy. But i do a little orange on this. This is, uh, this is going to be pretty good, I think. <clears throat> One of the things that happens, too, I'm starting to get a little... I'm getting ghost parts. Um, so you can do two things. You can take the static guard, spray it in the area. That's one way. Or you take some alcohol. Have a backup brush. Make sure it's clear and there's only alcohol in it. You can use 70 or 90 percent. Obviously, 91 percent stronger than the 70 percent, but both of them work fine. Got a new bottle at 90, just 91 percent, just because they happen to have it in the store. And lately, if you can find it, you need to buy it. <laughs> so, what you do is just a light mist. You don't want to wet it. You just do a light mist. And the evaporation of the alcohol helps reduce the static in the area. It's not, it's not a perfect technique, um, and you'll still get some, but it does reduce it quite a bit. What I'll do is if, if I get enough of it and it's a problem, then you can make some slight modifications to your design. Add a little bit of orange up on the, on the edges of contours of the body where you might have some ghost parts that you didn't catch. <clears throat> like right there because I'm making a video I didn't stop and spray a little alcohol first but it hasn't done any serious harm now I do want the orange to be kind of dark in the back and obviously it's going to get quite a bit lighter as it goes forward that's exactly what I want now some of the overspray will touch some of the the scoops and all the other things that are in these bodies for, for appearance <clears throat> Which is actually good. I like it when it uh, when that effect happens. It catches those edges. It adds to the it adds some more dimension. So that's exactly what you want. Getting some more dimension in there, little by little. And now I did put a little more orange in that. Then I I was gonna leave a little bit of uh, clear there to have some more yellow pop there. But because of the ghost part, I didn't spray it right away. I just adjusted and put a little more orange. It's not going to hurt anything. It's still going to look great. And uh, I'm going to clean out my brush. And go to it. <clears throat> Spray a little bit of yellow. A little trick with the yellow. When I'm spraying the yellow, I'm going to leave a little bit of see-through, just the tiniest little bit that adds to the depth. If you just smother it with yellow and make it all a solid yellow, you can do that. I mean, that'll work. It's going to be yellow. Um, I like to just let make it so when I put the the white backing, you're going to see a tiny bit of white, but just barely. You won't know why, it's, it, but it give it a little bit of depth. And that's the reason. It's hard to, hard to even tell it's been done, but just leave it a little transparent in a few spots. Obviously, the shape of the flame determines you're going to want to leave it a little transparent, following the flame right up the center, a little bit area. 
little bit of an area right there, not even an eighth of an inch or so wide. <clears throat> it's still going to look yellow. Someone really would have to look to see that there's white in there. But it pleases the eye. The yellow's a little heavy. So it's not flowing quite as well as I'd like. I could turn up the air pressure. But it's just barely cooperating and doing what I want. Don't forget all your little details. And I have these little flame licks off to the side. You have to keep remembering to do those every time you do each step. I'm hoping you can see that in the video where you can see through the yellow a little bit. I'm not sure if that shows up. It's really hard to tell on camera probably, but it's in there, trust me. I'm going to reduce it a little bit. Oh, this is an airbrush restorer. You don't want to use that. It's the stuff I mentioned in my first videos. Pretty hairy, you don't want to breathe that stuff. It's it's nasty. It's made to clear up dried paint. 4030 balancing clear. This reduces the material, helps it spray a little better. And it actually helps adhesion a little bit. I believe it's the base material they use to, to mix the paint. But I am definitely not a formulation expert. It has a similar texture to a, to a nice fresh bottle of paint. Now again I'm gonna leave big gaps in the yellow so that white can come through it and give it depth. So the, the yellow is going to get fogged in. I'm not going to do as much coverage as I did on those, with the yellow on those bodies, on the BJ4 bodies. I'm just going to give it enough yellow to add to the, the colors instead of going from orange to white, just a little bit of yellow. I'm going to, get the, I'm going to touch the ends of these scoops. I'm going to just put a little yellow in the nose. It's coming out good. I think this is going to be a pretty cool body for something I'm Winging it as I go. I think it's going to be pretty cool if I do say so myself. Why don't you guys tell me in the comments what you would have done differently. Uh, or if you like the way I did it. Maybe you can go on eBay and check it out once it's done. I'm hoping to have this done tomorrow along with the other bodies. And uh, I'll put this on eBay sometime tomorrow. But I am going to go to Old Town tonight. That'll be fun. I haven't been to Old Town in a while. Have some fun with checking out all the cars. Maybe I'll shoot a video over there. You guys want to see a see a YouTube Old Town Cruising video? I think I have one up there, but it's a really short one I did a while ago, and I think it was with my cell phone. But I'll bring the good camera and shoot one, I think. And then we'll see what we'll do. If, it, if everyone says in the comments that they want to see it, I'll post it. How about that? Really not happy. Yellow is really not happy. Yellow and the orange are both kind of thickening up. They're not that old. I think they're about six or eight months old. The age is always a factor. It's one of the things with, you know, I used to go through four ounce bottles. These are two ounce bottles. I used to go through a four or, and sometimes even an eight ounce bottle of the yellow and orange and blue every week because I was painting 40 bodies a week. But basically what was happening is I was working 50 hours a week at work and then I was working 30 hours, 40 hours a week at home, sometimes more. So I basically never got to do anything. I never had any family activities or or anything like that. Once in a while I'd go race and then I'd usually get yelled at for not having paint jobs done. <laughs> so now it's a lot more fun. I'm back to where I enjoyed doing it. And, uh, and it's a hobby again instead of trying to make a living at it and I could never get close to what I make as a as an auto mechanic since I'm a master technician I, I do pretty well at my real job and painting bodies is never going to come close maybe I'm doing something wrong in that department and someone's making a ton more money than I was when I was painting a lot but uh, it seems to me like there you go. it seems to me like it's just not a a great way to make a living although it is you can make pretty decent money but not nearly as much as you can after 30 years or so of being a mechanic so. <clears throat> and uh, put a little white in my color color cup I need a little more always remember when you're gonna shake your paint real good put your finger over the lid just in case makes quite a mess if you didn't quite snap it closed last time and you go to shake it and you're not holding the cap down. I mean, that's what I heard. I'm just saying. I clean this airbrush. I bump my air pressure up to 35. I'll be right back.
<clears throat> All right. Let's say a quick prayer. Moment of silence. This airbrush is going to airbrush heaven. Uh, I've tried cleaning it. I got all the stuff's clean inside. All the old paint's out. It still doesn't work. That tells me that the packing is, is worn out. Uh, the O-rings in here are probably chewed up. I don't have replacement O-rings. I think I paid $19 for this airbrush about 10 years ago. So we're going to send it into uh, airbrush heaven. I got another airbrush I already had ready to go. Of course, it's a uh, it's a master airbrush, also from Amazon, real cheapy. I took it out of the package. I've never used it. It's been sitting up there for about five years. There was some rust on some of the components inside, so the nozzle was sticky. Um, the threads for the air nozzle are already boogered up out of the package. I couldn't thread my air hose onto it, so I had to take my air nozzle my air valve off the old airbrush that's going into the scrap bin, put it on the, this airbrush, clean all the rust, re-lubricate everything. I got some trusty airbrush oil I water lube. Um, that stuff's really good. I can I also can use the, uh, the glycerin. Uh, lubricates pretty well too without affecting water-based paints and all. So, maiden voyage for a new economy airbrush. I mean, the problems with the air nozzle, that's really not acceptable, but I've had it for so long, there's nothing I can do about it now. But with cheap airbrushes, that's the chance you take. I only use these for, like I said, backing colors and main areas or metal flake, things like that. Um, it did come with a, a 0.2, a 0.5, and a 0.3 nozzle. Air pressure regulator, real primitive, just an air restrictor, really. Uh, and then on the nozzles and tips and stuff too, so gave us plenty of spare parts. I would hope that uh, they don't all come with boogered up threads on the bottoms, but uh, G233 is the part number. I'll put a link to it if anyone wants something cheap to try out. Um, <clears throat> I think the last one I had was a Master Airbrush too, but I'm not positive, and it, it worked for 10 years, so finally gave up the ghost. Let's throw, let's throw some paint. I got some pearl white that I mixed up. A little contrast, I'm going to use pearl white and then regular white in the checkers. I have to come out of it. <laughs> this is how it's supposed to work. And that is a cheap airbrush, but it still works. No problem with it. But the metal flakes, although the metal flakes look tiny, they're really quite big for a for an airbrush nozzle. This bottle of white is only a month or so old. I am kind of trying to hold my breath a little bit while I'm spraying. That's why I'm not talking quite as much as I would. Hope you guys aren't getting bored with that, with the dead air. Once I get a little a little bit of editing experience. Maybe I can blend in some music while I'm, while I'm holding my breath. <laughs> what are some of the uh, editors you guys like? Maybe you could leave in the comments. Uh, tips for editors. Um, I've experimented with some of them. Um, but right now I'm just using like iMovie. It comes in the uh, Apple. All Apple devices come with iMovie app, which works pretty good for really simple stuff. But it's not going to let me overlay music into a tiny portion of the video where I'm not chit-chatting. That I've seen so far. DaVinci Resolve. There's quite a few that I've looked at, but I'm just not sure which one to go for. So maybe you guys can help me out with that. There you go. One more... One more coat of white after that sets up a little bit on all three bodies. Uh, and then I'm going to peel out the um, window mask once I've done some uh, clear. Um, and then once that's done, I'll do a light coat of Rust-Oleum clear. Let it set up really good. You don't want to lay that in heavy because it'll pull the paint. So you just lay it in the light. Then you can do a little bit heavier second coat. Peel out your masks in the film and they'll be done.
So there you go, guys. I'll uh, I'll take some pictures to tack on to the end of the video and show you what the finished product looks like after I've peeled everything out and cleaned it up. So take a look in the description for uh, links to some of the products I use. The Economy Airbrush, like I said, could give you a little trouble. Most of the time they're okay. I've gone through a dozen of them or so. I stick with Iwata and Pash for the detail work and the cheap ones for other stuff. But uh, Click like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Tell me what uh, you'd like to see. Uh, maybe uh, what you think I can improve on as we, uh, as we grow this channel together. I really appreciate the support. Thanks, guys.